Malcolm Balk, a friend of mine, wrote a great book called Mastering the Art of Running. And it's about applying the Alexander Technique, posture, open shoulders, head held high, to show how runners can run with effort or not. And all the pictures in the book are really showing runners in the Olympics compared to runners like you and I about whether or not we approach running as something that can be efficient or effortful. And he makes the very good comment that practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. And so if you could be at a golf course and see that golfers will take many, many swings without a ball, I really don't believe that tennis players are doing that enough. Do they ever practice without a ball many, many times? to monitor, and I write about this a lot, their balance and their rhythm and whether it's effortful or effortless. But if there's any stroke that you're trying to learn in the game, I actually believe you can capture a part of it by rehearsing. And even in our ball machine classes, we'll do something where Margaret could be the hitter and somebody would be behind her waiting for a turn and I ask them to rehearse and they look at me like, well, no one rehearses in tennis, but I went through all this as a player, as a student, about the idea that if you're trying to improve your performance before you ever do it with a ball, can you do that same thing without a ball? And even now, this first move, I'm keeping on my back as straight as I can, I'm doing as little as I can with my hands, and all I'm re doing is I'm rehearsing something called dead hands. Now that's one aspect of the game, but meaning my body's moving and the racket's following. I cannot ever encourage you enough to rehearse without a ball, whether it's your serve, your forehand, or even your volley. This is a game for a lifetime, and we can always try to get better when we recognize that practice makes permanent, but perfect practice may make perfect.